We are on a mission tonight, and that mission is to buy the cheapest laptop from Walmart. So get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> Hurry up, get in the car. <laughs> All right, so here's the scenario. You're working on a, a web application and it's 12 o'clock at night. And by the way, the scenario is uh, inspired by events that happened at uh, Jupiter Broadcasting, which is a, a podcast I follow. But it's 12 o'clock at night and you knock over a Diet Coke over your laptop and you completely destroy your laptop. Well, you, push, you pushed everything up to Git and you have a copy of your project that's ready to be pulled down, but you don't have a laptop. So now it's 12 o'clock. Walmarts are everywhere and we're gonna run to Walmart and buy the cheapest laptop possible Just so we can pull our project back down make some final changes and push it back up to get for deployment tomorrow Or that's the scenario anyway 11 o'clock is not a good time to come to Walmart to buy a laptop because uh, no one's working here <laughs> right now So we've been waiting here for 15 minutes for someone to come and help us because all the laptops are locked behind bars back there um, even the $179 one so we're, we're still standing by. Why did we get the purple laptop? Hmm? Uh, there's no blue ones. Yes, there was no blue ones, so we got the best color there, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got the perfect purple laptop. And now you get to do the walk of shame all the way back to the car with your purple laptop. Yes. <laughs> In total, this laptop set us back $189, including taxes. And that's not bad if this thing ends up being a decent daily driver, but that is something we will determine as the video goes on. Now, I know this laptop pretty well, um, the Stream Series, because I have a friend that used to work in tech support at my uh, university. And he would always get tech support questions for this laptop. Students would bring these laptops up to him, even though it wasn't his job to support their laptops. Um, and they would ask him, you know, why, why is my laptop running so slow? Whenever I would hear about someone complaining about one of these laptops, I always ignorantly chalked it up to user error. Oh, they probably installed a really heavy antivirus program, or they probably bloated the thing down by installing a bunch of silly background apps. Or so I thought. But the truth is, these laptops, out of the box, are just barely able to do the simplest of tasks. Thanks to its 32 gigabytes of flash memory, boot times hover around a respectable 27 seconds, and most programs open quick enough. However, combining Windows 10 with a dual-core Celeron N3060 with a base clock of 1.6 gigahertz can make this thing a dog to use at times. When it comes to browsing the web, you are going to need to summon up some patience, as websites take some time to fully load. You will be able to stream HD videos at 720p, just make sure to keep your hands off the laptop because opening up any sort of streaming HUD will result in frame drops. Basic office applications, notepad apps, and light IDEs are where this laptop shines. After putting it through a couple days of testing, I would really only recommend this as a last resort office slash school machine, and possibly a light coding platform for some super simple or educational app development. Now, for a sub $200 laptop, build quality is acceptable. The laptop is entirely plastic, making it a little bit flimsy, but also helping it maintain a very portable weight at approximately 2.5 pounds. I.O. is lacking, but good enough. On the left side of the laptop, there is a single USB 2.0 port, lock slot, and a headphone jack. And on the right side, there's a single USB 3.0 port, full-size HDMI, micro SD card reader, and the power port. The 1366 by 768 display is washed out and viewing angles are poor, reminiscent of the displays of older business laptops, such as the T420 and Dell Latitude E6400. Even with a completely passive cooling solution, somehow the N3060 was able to stay at its boost clock rate of 2.48 GHz while running ADA64 for 25 minutes though the bottom of the laptop got unbearably hot to the touch during the stability testing. So if you're pushing this laptop really hard, just keep in mind it might burn a hole in your lap. Like the rest of this laptop, the keyboard is mediocre at best. There is a decent amount of travel in the keys, and I could definitely picture myself writing a short essay or a couple hundred lines of code using this keyboard. Now the trackpad, on the other hand, is pretty rough. 
Personally, I'm not a huge fan of single piece trackpads and I think this implementation of the single piece trackpad just makes it that much worse. Uh, I got frustrated and I stopped using the trackpad after about 15 minutes and broke out a mouse. So this is definitely one of those laptops that I would carry a mouse around in my backpack for. On to the benchmarks, which brings me to one of the most prominent points as to why I would only really recommend the stream as a last resort. The price to performance ratio of this laptop is terrible when you compare it to some of the alternate used laptop options available. A properly upgraded Lenovo ThinkPad T410, which was released nearly 10 years ago and can be put together for less than half the price, performs just as well, if not a little bit better, than this brand new machine. Move up one ThinkPad generation and the T420 absolutely blows the Stream 11 out of the water. For 189 bucks, you could spec a used business laptop with significantly better build quality to absolutely decimate the stream. The stream did have a few performance surprises up its sleeve. Though the integrated Intel HD 400 graphics performed poorly in synthetics as expected, this hunk of plastic was actually able to run some older 3D games. Portal was 100% playable at the highest video settings. Set to medium settings, the stream was able to run Crisis at around 15 frames per second, which was the most unexpected result throughout my testing. And finally, Minecraft ran, but was not playable, even at reduced graphics settings. It was consistently hanging, even after I left it ample time to load the surrounding blocks. I'm not going to stop here. I'm not going to give up on the stream just yet. Sure, it's flimsy, and slow, and not really that great of a value, but I think performance-wise, this machine was destined to be sluggish right out of the factory thanks to Windows 10. So we are going to see if we can fix that. I wiped Windows 10 and installed a standard desktop version of Ubuntu 18.04 on the Stream 11. Looking at the specs on paper, I have a feeling that Linux is the answer to at least one of this laptop's problems. Installing Linux on the Stream 11 follows the same process as any other laptop. Just hit F9 at boot to select the installation media and then walk through the standard installation process. I started out with elementary OS, but the Wi-Fi chip was not recognized out of the box, so I opted to use Ubuntu 18.04 instead. Wi-Fi works out of the box on Ubuntu, however, right-click functionality for the trackpad does not. So you have to use a two-finger tap for right-click. Right off the bat, the system was much more responsive with Ubuntu. UI actions felt more fluid, and applications were much quicker to respond. Web browsing was much more tolerable, though keep in mind Chromium is a little lighter on resources compared to Chrome. Though a better UX than Windows, there were still times where Ubuntu would hang, and there were a few instances where it seemed like applications just gave up on opening, but then suddenly opened after several seconds. I moved to Ubuntu Mate for a little after trying standard Ubuntu to see if a lighter distro would further improve the UX. As far as I could tell, everything was working out of the box with Ubuntu Mate, even the right-click button. Yes, I know it looks like it should be pronounced Mate, but the developers say it's pronounced Mate. Mate was the best out of all three distros I tested, both in compatibility and performance. If I had to use one of these as a daily driver, I would absolutely wipe the Windows install and replace it with Mate, as it really makes this a pleasantly usable machine. The only drawback I noticed with Linux is that there was a little screen tearing present while streaming HD videos. Videos were watchable still, but this was something I did not have to deal with on Windows. So would I use a Stream 11 as an absolute last resort? Yes. If you have no choice and have to use this over the long run, I would highly recommend installing a lightweight Linux distro. That being said, if you do have a choice, definitely go with a used business laptop with a solid state drive over the Stream. You're going to get a much better bang for your buck, and you will end up with a much more capable machine. The Stream isn't terrible, it's just very, very mediocre. And sometimes in an emergency, such as the scenario presented at the beginning of this video, very mediocre is good enough. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive review of Walmart's cheapest Windows laptop. If you found this video informative and entertaining, consider sharing it with others on relevant subreddits, social media pages, websites, etc. Sometimes people are scared to share our content because they think it's like stealing for some reason, and it's really not. It does help us out if you uh, try to get these videos out there. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like on it. If you didn't like it, please tell me why down in the comments section. Thanks for watching, guys. That is going to be about it for this video. I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology. As you guys can see, I just kind of rolled out of bed here and I'm frantically trying to throw the video together back there um, today because if I don't get it done today, it's not going to be pushed out for another week. 
but I was going through the video footage and I realized I did not include a sample of the audio or video from the HP Streams integrated webcam or integrated microphone. So here that is right now, uh, just recording in my bedroom, you know, uh, a typical like webcam scenario. Um, and also I didn't really touch on the integrated speakers. So this does have uh, integrated speakers and those aren't anything to write home about, but they are decently loud. So you could stream uh, Netflix and kind of just sit back, turn the volume up to like 75% and you can hear everything. So they get the job done, but you know, this is a $179 laptop. So they're not amazing or anything. Okay, so I think that's good enough for the sample. Now this is officially going to be it for the video. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.